हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे हरे नाम हरे नाम राम राम हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 नाम हरे नाम राम राम हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 नाम हरे नाम राम राम हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे हरे नाम राम राम हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे हरे नाम हरे नाम राम राम हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे हरे नाम हरे नाम राम राम हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण कृष्ण हरे हरे नाम हरे नाम राम राम हरे 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 नाम हरे नाम राम राम हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे हरे नाम हरे नाम राम राम हरे 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 कृष्ण 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 हरे हरे नाम हरे नाम राम राम हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे 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 नाम हरे नाम राम राम हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे 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 नाम हरे नाम राम राम हरे 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 कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 नाम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे वाचा कल्पतरोभ्य कृपा सिंधुभ्य पति पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम अनकोटि वैष्णवृंद की जय नामाचार्य शिलास ठाकुर की जय शील प्रभुपाद की जय असंबल डिवोटी की जय हरे कृष्णा प्लीज एक्सेप्ट माय हम्बल ऑल ऑलोरी टू शील प्रभुपाद दिस इज विनीता गंधर्विक देवीदासी फ्रॉम टेक्सस वेलकमिंग ऑल द डिवोटीज टू early morning uh, japa session please forgive me for interrupting your ecstatic chanting i would like to read the ten offenses to the holy name which are to be avoided written by shila vyasa deva in padma purana one to bless when the devotees who have dedicated their life for, for propagating the holy name of the lord second to consider the name of demigods like lord shiva or lord brahma to be equal or to be independent of the name of lord vishnu third to disobey the order of the spiritual master fourth to bless when the vedic scriptures or scriptures in pursuance to the vedic version five to consider the glories of chanting hari krishna to be an imagination six to give some interpretation to the holy name of the lord seven to commit sinful activities on the strength of the holy name eight to consider the chanting of hari krishna as one of the auspicious ritualistic activities which are offered in vedas as fruitive activity karma kanda nine to instruct this person about the glories of the holy name ten to not have a complete faith in chanting of the holy name and to maintain material attachment even after understanding so many instructions on this matter it is also to be attentive to you while chanting every devotee who claims to be vaishnava must start against these offenses in order to achieve the desired success of krishna prema once again i thank everyone for joining today's bhakti sangha japa conference call let us move on to the next part of the session which is shrimad bhagavatam class before that may i know who all joined this morning hari krishna ji tagandar vikramata ji nandrat pranam sila prabhupad ki jai guru maharaj ki jai prachida sukham shalo hari krishna Hare Krishna Priti Mata Ji Dhanavad Pranam All Glories to Shila Prabhu Pa Thank you so much Mata Ji for joining every day and giving your association Mata Ji Hari Bol Hari Bol Hare Krishna Vinita Mata Ji Please accept my humble obeisances All Glories to Shila Prabhu Pa This is Anita from Sharjah Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Anita Mata Ji Dhanavad Pranam All Glories to Shila Prabhu Pa Thank you so much Mata Ji for joining and giving your association Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Mata Ji Dhanavad Pranam All Glories to Prabhu Pa All Glories to Guru Maharaj All Glories to Assembly What it is is Mohini Lakshmi from Detroit Hare Krishna Mohini Lakshmi Mata Ji Dhanavad Pranam All Glories to Shila Prabhu Pa Thank you so much Mata Ji for joining every day and giving your sweet association Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Mata Ji Dhanavad Pranam please accept my humble obeisances all glories to Shri Prabhupad and Shri Guru and Gauranga and all assembled devotees Yashamati from Chicago Hare Krishna Yashamati Mata Ji Dhanavad Pranam all glories to Shri Prabhupad thank you Mata Ji for joining every day and giving us with our session early morning mid morning and chanting so beautifully very grateful to you Mata Ji Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Mata Ji Hare Krishna Mata Ji my name is Pralada Nandas from Las Vegas All glory to Sri Prabhupada. Thank you for the for the such thing. Hari Bol. Hari Krishna Prahlana Prahla Dhanand Prabhu Ji Dhanavat Pranam All glory to Sri Lal Prabhupada. Thank you Prabhu Ji for joining every day and giving your association. Very nice to see you Prabhu Ji. Thank you. We are very fortunate to have you on the call. Hari Bol. Welcome to the Haribol. call. Hari Bol. Hari Krishna Vinita Gandhari Kamata Ji All glory to Sri Lal Prabhupada and Guru Maharaj Ji. My humble obeisances to you and all the devotees. This is Krishna Kumar Devidasi from Rani. Hare Krishna Krishna Kumari Mata Ji Dhanavad Pranam All Glories to Shila Prabhupada. Thank you so much Mata Ji for joining and giving your association. Very grateful to you Mata Ji. You join me and give your association. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Mata Ji. My name is Janaki and I'm joining you from Bangalore, India. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Janaki Mata Ji Dhanavad Pranam All Glories to Shila Prabhupada. Thank you so much Mata Ji for joining and giving your association. Hare Krishna. 
Hare Krishna Mataji, Gandhavat Pranam, all glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to all the devotees. This is Sushmita from Canada. Hare Krishna Sushmita Mataji, Gandhavat Pranam, all glories to Srila Prabhupada. Thank you so much, Mataji, for joining every day and giving your association. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, is there anybody who would like to introduce themselves? Hare Krishna Mataji, this is Bhavatarani Radhika Devi Dasi from Uman Pranams Mataji, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Bhavatarani Radhika Mataji, Dandavat Pranam, all glory to Srila Prabhupada. Nice to hear your voice Mataji, welcome to the call. Thank you so much for your association. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Mataji. Hare Krishna Mataji, Dandavat Pranam, Srila Prabhupada ki jai, Guru Maharaj ki jai. This is Arvind Daksh Das from Chicago, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Arun Daksha Prabhuji, Dandavat Pranam, all glories to Srila Prabhupada. Thank you so much, Prabhuji, for joining and giving your session. And missed your second attendance, Prabhuji. You always give the uh, your announce your name second. Today I missed that. Uh, I, uh, anyway, nice to hear your voice, Prabhuji. Hari Bol, welcome to the call. Hare Krishna, Jini Mataji. This is Kaumadaki Dasi from Baltimore. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glory to Sri Prabhupada, all glory to Brahma, all the devotees. Hare Krishna, Kaumadaki Mataji, Dhanavat Pranam, all glory to Srila Prabhupada. Thank you so much, Mataji, for joining every day and blessing all of us. Very grateful to you, Mataji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Mataji. Thank you. Hare Krishna, Vrinda Gopika Mataji, Dhanavat Pranam, all glory to Srila Prabhupada. Thank you so much, Mataji, for joining. Hare Krishna. Then what for now, Maji Vrind Takantari Mataji to you and Hare Krishna, Bita. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Mataji, please accept my humble obeisance. Shri Prabhupada Kiya, Guru and Guru Amatija, and all the assembly devotees. This is Shivani from Ashwati. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Shivani Mataji, then with Pranam, all glories to Srila Prabhupada. Thank you so much, Mataji, for joining every day and giving your association. Hare Krishna. So Mataji is already on the call. We will uh, start the recording here. Yeah. Hare Krishna, welcome everybody to Bhakti Sangha Jepa conference call. Today we are very fortunate to have her grace Antaranga Tulasi Mataji to enlighten us on the topic of Srimad Bhagavatam, 5th Canto, Chapter 25, Verse 9. Hare Krishna Mataji, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Thank you so much Mataji for your valuable time and association this morning. We are very fortunate to have you on the call. It is very nice to see you Mataji. Hare Bol. Uh, before I hand over the call to you, I Ms. Raj Prabhu to give brief introduction. Ra Raj Prabhu ji, over to you Prabhu. Hare Krishna Mataji. Then we pranam to you and all the assembled devotees. All glories to Srila Prabhupada, Shri Guru and Gauranga. Here is a brief introduction for Mataji. Hare Krishna Antaranga Mataji. Her grace, Antaranga Mataji, is a born devotee to the devotee couples. His grace Gopijan Valla Prabhu and her grace Shama Gopika Mataji. She is a very fortunate soul that from very young age got the opportunity to take daily darshan of Sri Sri Radha Madhav, Narasingadev and Panchatattva. Also got great opportunity to get blessings of almost every Maharaj visiting Sri Dham Mayapur. Mataji gives nectarian classes on Srimad Bhagavatam her soul and life is Sri Sri Radha Madha Mayapur. Mataji has passed Bhakti Shastri and now studying Bhakti Web of courses. And she has passed teacher's training course also. Mataji is a disciple of our beloved His Holiness Jayapataka Swami Maharaj. There is a brief introduction for Mataji. Over to you, Vinita Mataji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much, Raj Prabhu, for the brief introduction. Once again, welcome to the call, Mataji. We are very fortunate to have you on the call. Please take over the call, Mataji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna to everyone. First of all, I feel very fortunate to be in this wonderful Vaishnava assembly today. And uh, more fortunate to sit along with all of you and read and glorify the Supreme Personality of Godhead from Srimad Bhagavatam, which is the treasure and the most dear, most uh, thing of all the Gaudiya Vaishnav devotees. I very well know that I'm completely unqualified, 
by age, by maturity, by knowledge and all these to all of you and to speak in front of you on this exalted topic. But I'm attempting to do this only by the orders of my seniors and with the faith, I have the faith on the blessings of all of you. And therefore, before I begin, I request all of you to please uh, bless me so that I can serve you all in a, in a favorable manner today by glorifying the Lord. So let's begin with uh, Manglacharan. Om Ajnana Timirandhasya Jnana Shalakaya Chakshur Unmilitam Yena Tasme Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bhishtam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamahyam Dadati Swapadantikam Vandeyaham Shri Guru Shri Yuta Padakamalam Shri Guru Vaishnavamscha Shri Rupam Sagajatam Sahagana Raghuna Tanvitam Tam Sajiv Sadvaitam Savadrutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitan Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakhan Vitamscha Hey Krishna Karna Sandho, Dina Bandho, Jagatpate, Gopesha Gopka Kanta, Radha Kanta, Namaste, Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi, Radhe Vrinda Vaneshwari, Vishavhana Sate Devi, Pranamami, Hari Priye, Nama Vishnu Padaya, Krishna Prashthaya Bhutale, Shrimate Bhakti Vedanta, Swami Nitinamine, Namaste, Saraswati Devi, Gauravani, Pracharine, Nirvisesha, Shunyavadi, Pasha, Tidhi, Shatarine, Namamishnapadaya, Krishna Pashtaya, Puta de Shrimati, Jagataka, Swami, Nitinamini, Nama Acharya Padaya, Nitai Krita Pradayane, Gaurakatha, Damadaya, Nagaragra, Matarine, Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda, Shri Advaita Gadadhara, Sri Vasadi Gaura Pakta Vinda, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Madhika Bandhu Matsangin, Madguru Man Mahadhana, Manistaraka Madhagya, Madananda, Namastati. Hare Krishna. Uh, so today we are going to read from Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 5, Chapter 25, and uh, Text 9. You'll be sharing the screen, Mataji. Yes, yes, Mataji. We will be sharing. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Utpati sthiti layaheta vosya kalpa Satva dya prakriti guna yadikshaya sen Yadru pam dhruvamakritam yadekamatman Nana dhat katamuha vedatasya vartma Utpati sthiti laya heta vosya kalpa Satva dya prakati guna yadiksha yasan Yadru pam dhruvamakritam yadekamatman Nana dhat kathamuha vedatasya vartma There's repetition, Mataji. Anybody repeat uh, with the repeat the verse? Mataji, usually we don't mute when you are doing, that is what we do, Mataji. If you want any devotee, we can call up. It's fine. If it's, if it's normal, then it's fine. 
so moving to word by word synonyms utpatti of creation sthiti maintenance laya and dissolution hetavah the original cause asya of this material world kalpah capable of acting sattva adaya adya headed, headed by the sattva guna prakriti guna the modes of material nature yet of whom ikshaya by the glands asan became yad roopam that's the form of whom dhruvam unlimited akritam uncreated yet who ekam one atman in himself nana variously adhat has manifested katham how uha certainly veda can understand tasya his vartma path translation and purport and divine grace ऐसी भक्ति वेदन का स्वामी शेला प्रभुपाद की जय बाय हिज ग्लांस द सुप्रीम पर्सनालिटी ऑफ गॉड हेड एनेबल्स द मोर्स ऑफ मटेरियल नेचर टू एक्ट एज द कॉजेस ऑफ यूनिवर्सल क्रिएशन मेंटेनेंस एंड डिस्ट्रक्शन द सुप्रीम सोल इज अनलिमिटेड एंड बिगिनिंगलेस एंड ऑल्सो ही इज वन ही हैज मैनिफेस्टेड हिमसेल्फ इन मेनी फॉर्म्स हाउ कैन ह्यूमन सोसाइटी अंडरस्टैंड द वेज ऑफ द सुप्रीम so before getting into today's verse uh, i would like to give a recap of shrimad bhagavatam up to this place where we are today because shrimad bhagavatam is so vast and it has been intertwined with so many stories and so many conversations of different great great personalities who are all great devotees of the lord and so at a point of time after crossing few cantos we tend to forget the flow of shrimad bhagavatam that how from the beginning we have come to this place how their the cantos are uh, bound together and what is the thread running through so i would like to give a small recap of from shrimad bhagavatam 1.1.1 to where we are today 5.25.9 so uh, if devotees you can also unmute yourself and if you would like to add or help me doing this recap then it'll be even more uh, interesting and nice so what happens uh, in the beginning of shrimad bhagavatam shrimad bhagavatam 1.1.1 so in the beginning of bhagavatam it is vyasadev who is speaking and who is he speaking to he is speaking to us the readers directly vyasadev to me personally we should think so he starts with om namo bhagavate vasudevaya and he recites the first three mangalacharan prayers and then vyasadev begins to explain that once upon a time the in the place of naimisharanya the sages performed sacrifice and they invited sutu goswami to come and speak about bhagavatam and then uh, shaunaka the rishi starts speaking and shaunaka the rishis they ask six questions to uh, sutta goswami and of this and uh, sutta goswami answers all the six questions in the first canto and the sixth question is where has the dharma taken shelter after uh, where have religious principles taken shelter of after the supreme lord krishna has written back this about this is the question the sixth question that uh, the sages put forward to sutta goswami and to in answer to this uh, sutta goswami speaks that shrimad bhagavatam krishna sudhama pagate dharma gyana didi sah kalo nashta drishamesha pranarko adhimoditah so shrimad bhagavatam is like the sun that has risen after the lord's departure and this is the shelter for everyone and he begins to say very shortly about this was this is a cream of all literatures written by vyasadev and this was spoken to shukadev uh, spoken to parikshit by shri shukadev goswami so at that point shonaka the rishis they ask sutta goswami that uh, please explain how this bhagavatam was composed by vyasadev and how parikshit maharaj was born tell us about his activities and how a great king like parikshit maharaj was ruling the entire uh, bhumandala entire uh, country continent how did he re- he renounce everything and why did he go to the forest and how he met shukadev goswami who is a renunciant who generally doesn't meet with worldly people 
So after so they place a number of questions, and in answer to this, Sutta Goswami, this is around Canto One, Chapter uh, Six Seven. He begins to talk of how Vyasadeva composed Srimad Bhagavatam. So he explains how Vyasadeva was despondent after composing so many Vedas, Puranas. Still, he was feeling some kind of dissatisfaction. And Narada comes and answers and tells that you have to write Srimad Bhagavatam. And then Vyasadeva meditates. He sees a wonderful vision, which is which is explained to us through the means of Srimad Bhagavatam. And then after explaining this, then our Sutta Goswami, he begins to speak of how Parikshit was born. He begins about how in the battlefield of Kurukshetra, Ashwatthama, he killed the five sleeping sons of Draupadi. The whole story begins from there, events leading up to the birth of Parikshit. And in that set of chapters, we have the prayers of Kunti Maharani, and then Ashwatthama shoots the arrow to the womb of Uttara, where Parikshit is there, then Krishna saves and then there is Bhishma Stuti, and then uh, Krishna departs for, uh, he leaves Hastinapur and he goes to Dwaraka. And then there is some description about what happens in Hastinapur, like uh, Vidura comes and meets Dhritarashtra. Vidura has gone on a pilgrimage during the war, Kurukshetra war. And now that the war has ended, after meeting Maitreya, having a long discussion, Vidura comes back to Hastinapur. He uh, enlightened Dhritarashtra. Dhritarashtra Maharaj retires and then uh, Yudhishthir gets the news of Krishna's departure from Arjun and the Pandavas also retire. This completes Canto 1, Chapter 14. And then there is description of Parikshit Maharaj's great rule, how he punishes Kali, how he protects Dharma and Dhara, and then how Parikshit Maharaj gets cursed by Shringhi and that leads to Parikshit Maharaj's renunciation that having cursed to be died in seven days, he comes, he leaves his kingdom, he leaves everything, he comes to the bank of Ganges and he is waiting for Shukadev Goswami who arrives in Srimad Bhagavatam in Canto 1, Chapter 19. And then Shukadev Goswami is welcome. And at the end of Canto 1, uh, Parishit Maharaj asks two questions to Shukadev Goswami. And these two questions are answered throughout Srimad Bhagavatam. This is one of the common threads that run through Canto 1 to Canto 12. Anybody remembers what are those two questions that Parishad Maharaj asked in the end of first Canto? Mataji, is it how to leave life and how to leave life? L-I-V-E and L-E-V-E. Is that the one, Mataji? Kind of. It's very similar to that. Okay, Mataji. Thank you. Two questions. Anyone would like to uh, think of? Uh, Mataji, during our last, uh, uh, last uh, of, of our lifetime, last time of our lifetime, what will we have to do? That is the question or what, Mataji? Uh, repeat what, Mataji? I couldn't answer. During the last of our lifetime, what we should do? What uh, can we do? That was the question. That is one part of the question. So the two questions that he asked is, first question was, what is the duty of a man, of a human being, and what is the duty of a man at the time who is about to die? This was the first question. And second question was, at all times, what is one supposed to hear, chant, remember, and worship? So these were the two questions that uh, were uh, Parikshit Maharaj places before Shukadev Goswami. And in Canto 2, this ends, Canto 1 ends in this way which is actually a prelude to the Bhagavatam. And Canto 2 begins with Shukadev Goswami uh, opening and he begins to recite Srimad Bhagavatam. So in the first part of Canto uh, 2, he begins to answer these two questions that uh, Parishit Maharaj had asked. So after answering them, again Parishit places a few more questions. Uh, these questions are primarily based on creation. And then this question of Parishit is answered by Shukadev by quoting a conversation that happened between Brahma and Narada. So Narada goes and asks Brahma similar questions which Parikshit had asked and Brahma is answering. And during quoting this, he explains about how the creation happened, uh, the primary creation. Then after hearing this answer, Parikshit Maharaj puts forward another set of 21 questions to Shukadev Goswami 
and this set of 21 questions is answered throughout Canto 2, Canto 3, Canto 4, Canto 5. Uh, this, this, this question passes through. So 21 questions he asks. And these questions are all related to the primary creation, to the secondary creation, uh, about the jivas condition, about the supreme lords, material and spiritual forms, varied topics. And then uh, Shukadev Goswami, he first primarily answers some questions of uh, Parishit Maharaj by quoting in, can in uh, this is in Canto 2, Chapter uh, 9. He uh, answers by quoting the conversation between the Supreme Lord himself and Brahma in the beginning of creation. Right in the beginning, when nothing was created, only Brahma was present alone. That time Brahma prayed to the Lord and there was a law, there was a uh, conversation between uh, Brahmaji and the Supreme Lord. And that is known as the Chatushloki Bhagavatam. Four verses, seed verses of Bhagavatam, Lord Krishna speaks. So this is there. And then, uh, then Avashukadev Goswami says, the rest of the questions that you asked Parikshit, they can be answered in Srimad Bhagavatam. And he describes the 10 topics that he's going to speak in Srimad Bhagavatam. And then there's a pause here. And suddenly, again, Shaunaka, the Rishis come back in the picture. And they ask, uh, so Sutta Goswami is telling that to the Shaunakadi Rishis that Shukadev and Parishit are talking like this. So then Shaunakadi Rishi, Sha Shaunaka, he comes up with a question to uh, Sutta Goswami that in Canto 1, you had mentioned that Vidura had come to meet Dhritarashtra and before coming to meet Dhritarashtra, Vidura had spoken with Maitreya. Can you please explain to us more about that conversation that happened between Vidura and Maitreya? So, then in Canto 3, begins with uh, this conversation between Vidura and Maitreya. So this is brought up because the questions, the 21 questions that Parishat had asked are similar to Vidura's questions with Maitreya. And uh, Sutta Goswami says that even Shukadev and Parishat, they also discussed about this conversation. And then uh, Canto 3 begins with uh, the events that lead up to Vidura meeting Maitreya. That is, Vidura is going on pilgrimage. He meets Uddhava. He requests to get transcendental knowledge from Uddhava. And Uddhava directs Vidura to Maitreya. Then Maitreya and Vidura meet. And uh, Vidura, he glorifies Maitreya very well. And then he places some questions to uh, Maitreya about creation, about uh, Kala, about time, about the secondary creation of Brahmaji. And so primarily Canto 3, Chapter 13 onwards begins to discuss about the secondary creation of Brahma. So after Brahma is created and then Brahma begins to create the 14 planetary systems, he begins to create the Prajapatis, he begins to create his own sons like Narada, Sarakumara, Sudra, Swayamva, Manu. So all this is described. And then when there's the description, uh, Swayamva, Manu attracts Maitreya and Abhidra a lot. And then Vidura requests Maitreya Please explain to me more about the qualities and the lineage of Swayamva Manu. So then Maitreya, he begins to talk about Swayamva Manu's lineage. And this lineage of Swayamva Manu is what goes from Canto 4 to Canto 5. So Swayamva Manu had uh, three daughters and two sons. So Akuti, Prasuti and Devahuti were the three daughters. And Uttanapad and Priyavrata were the two sons. So in the end of Canto 3, uh, Maitreya Muni, he describes about one daughter, that is Devabhuti. He describes her, uh, uh, her uh, lineage or her uh, pastimes. So she is married to Gardama Muni and then there is their son Kapila, the incarnation of the Lord himself and then there is Kapila Siksha. So that is how third Canto ends. So in fourth Canto, Maitreya again resumes the lineage of Swayamva Manu he first describes the lineage of Akuti, the daughter, second daughter. And then he describes about Prasuti. And Prasuti is married to Daksha. And then there is a description of uh, Daksha's uh, family. Sati is there. That is uh, Parvati, Shiva's wife. And then there is the whole pastime of Shiva and Sati uh, arguing about going to Daksha's house and Daksha's deliverance. The whole pastime is there. And then... They resume after talking about Shiva and Sati. They come back to the main line, which is Swayambhuva Manu's lineage. And he explains about Uttanapad, the first son of 
um, Swayam Bhavamanu. So in Uttanapad's lineage is the first comes Dhruva Maharaj. And so Canto 4 deals with number of uh, characters and for, who are all in the lineage of Dhruva Maharaj. So he describes Uttanapad and then Uttanapad's son Dhruva. And then there is um, Dhruva Maharaj's son uh, Anga, Anga Maharaj, whose son is Vena. And from Vena is born uh, Prithu Maharaj. And there are glories of Prithu Maharaj, how he ruled the earthly planet, how he milked Mother Earth. This glorious incarnation of the Lord. So there's a lot of description. And then Prithu Maharaj's son, Antardhan, comes. He's described. And then Antardhana's son is the great king Maharaj Prachina Barhi. And then there is his deliverance. And then his sons are described. Prachina Barhi's sons are the uh, Prachetas. And then there is the Prachetas are actually uh, 10 sons of Prachina Barhi. They perform Tapasya. They meet Lord Shiva. And Lord Shiva gives them the process to meditate on Lord Krishna. And then the uh, fourth canto ends with this. That Vidura thanks Maitreya for describing and uh, spending time with him, describing this whole uh, uh, lot of pastimes of the Lord. And then Vidura returns. Vidura is going where? Vidura is going to Hastinapur. And that has already been described in Canto 1. So then how does Canto 5 begin? Canto 5 begins with Sutta Goswami telling Sh Shaunaka the Rishis that Shukadev Goswami, he continues to speak to Parikshit about the lineage of Swayambhavamani. So we already discussed in Canto 3 and Canto 4, Akuti, Prasuti, Devabhuti, the three daughters and their families of Swayambhavamanu and one son, which was Uttanapad. So who is left out in the family of Swayambhavamanu? Priyavrata. Priyavrata yeah. Maharaj. Priyavrata. The second son of uh, Swayambhavamanu. So Canto 5 begins with Shukadev Goswami glorifying Priyavrata. How Priyavrata Maharaj, who was a renunciant, uh, who was practicing Brahmacharya, uh, he was uh, introduced into Grihastha life by the order of Brahmaji. And then uh, how he very wonderfully ruled the Dhu Mandala, how he married Purvachiti, and he had children. And uh, a main feature of Priyavrata was that he, by his chariot wheels, he divided the Dhu Mandala into seven oceans and seven islands. And then there is the description of the lineage of uh, Priyavrat Maharaj. So Priyavrat Maharaj and Purvachiti's son was Agnidra. And then Agnidra's son was Rishavadev, who was another incarnation of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And then there is the glories of Rishavadev. And then Rishavadev uh, sons of which the foremost is Maharaj Bharat. And then there is the past time for three lives of Bharat. And uh, then comes Jadavarat's pastime, which ends up the Priyavrata's uh, line. And then there is a few more kings uh, described. And then Parishit Maharaj, he asks uh, Shukadev Goswami that, please, I want to know more about this uh, structure of the, uh, of the universe after Priyavrata had divided it into this uh, seven islands and seven oceans. So he asks about that, the structure. So one thing one may ask is that why is so much importance given to the family of Swayambhu Manu? I mean, third canto, fourth canto, fifth canto, they are dealing with just one family that of this material world. So Swayambhu Manu's family is very, very divine. They were all wonderful devotees of the Lord. You can see such uh, striking characters are there like Dhruva Maharaj, there is Anga Maharaj. Then we have Rishavadev, we have uh, Bharat Maharaj, wonderful uh, Prachina Barhi, Pracheta, such wonderful devotees and gems come in this line as Swayambha Manu. And also, of course, Devahuti, she's a foremost devotee. And also the Supreme Personality of God himself has incarnated many times in this one family alone. As Yajna, the son of Akuti and Ruchi, as uh, son of uh, Devahuti and Kardama Kapil uh, Maharaj. And then there is uh, Rishabhadev, the son of uh, our, uh, whose son is Rishabhadev? Nabhi, uh, right? Agnidra, no. Yeah, Agnidra, son of Rishabhadev. 
so many places the lord has incarnated again and again in this family of uh, swayamvu manu and has given special mercy to them so that is why this family of swayamvu manu is taking so much uh, prominence in shrimad bhagavatam ritu maharaj so, also born in the same family yeah ritu maharaj the amazing the ideal leader of the world so then shukadev goswami he describes so in canto 5 chapter 16 onwards shukadev goswami begins to describe the structure of this universe it's very very technical part of shrimad bhagavatam and after describing the enormous uh, detail and the enormous nature of this universe and how many so many yojanas big there is a loka loka mountain there is a mount sumeru there are so many planetary systems and it's each of the dvipas there are seven uh, dvipas they are all so big big how many yojanas there are all more than tens and thousands of yojanas big and there is um, the nine varshas and then there is uh, then uh, our um, Shukadev Goswami describes the personalities, the leaders who are present in each varsha, the prayers they offer, their worshipable deity and the inhabitants there. And you know, when you read the structure of the universe, it is just so magnificent and so inconceivable and we are like so tiny in this big universe. And it's, uh, we can imagine that this universe is like inconceivably big. It's really big. We get that picture. Whether we understand or not the measurements and the details, sometimes for persons like me, universal structure is just inconceivable. It's just beyond my comprehension. I can't understand how it's present. But one thing I understand is it's really big and it's inconceivably very heavy and big, this Brahmanda. And then in chapter 25, Chukadev Goswami is glorifying Anantadev and what is anantadev doing anantadev is carrying this whole universe that we read from 16 to 20 uh, so we have read so much uh, details of this universe and we have you know we get an idea of how heavy it is and how big it is and that big and heavy and uh, inconceivable magnificent structure is held by this person called anantadev who is sitting down under the whole universe in the garbhodaka ocean and in his thousands of foods he is carrying this universe and uh, that is that is where we are today of this glorification of uh, anantadev and it's just so amazing that we will read today of how anantadev feels about carrying such a heavy burden on his head you know i'm sure you had already read through this but still it's it's just so amazing so Let's get into the purport of this verse today that we have come to. Purport of Shri Prabhupada Ki Chai. From Vedic literature, we learn that when the Supreme Lord glances, Sa Aikshata, over the material energy, the three modes of material nature become manifest and create material variety. before he glances over the material energy there is no possibility of the creation maintenance and annihilation of the material world the lord existed before the creation and consequently he is eternal and unchanging therefore how can any human being however great a scientist or philosopher he may be understand the ways of the supreme personality of godhead so there is this uh, significance of this word sa aikshata it comes in the verse also that just by his glance so ananta dev i'm sure you are now familiar with this character in bhagavatam you have been reading about him for the past uh, eight verses that he is non different from the supreme personality of godhead he is an expansion of shri balram ji or also shri nityananda prabhu he is their expansion and he is the supreme personality of godhead and at the same time out of love for the lord krishna he considers himself the servant of uh, the supreme lord so this uh, sa aikshata is very very significant that ananta this power is being shown here that just by his glance he is able to create this entire material world the elements the material modes of nature and the living entities everything 
everything the, and the krishna says in gita maya adhyakshena prakriti suyate sa sharayara so that adhyaksha or that ikshana is being done by ananta dev and the power of his glance is, is we can we can we can perceive the power of his glance that this whole material world is running is is created is maintained and destroyed just by this glance of ananta dev you know like in practically in this world you know when we uh, when we are in a place in some leadership position then we have to supervise the uh, juniors of how they are working and we have experience you know even in maya for that when you want to get the work done you have to um, be there and always keep looking at them getting the work done and it's just not enough by looking and by present you have to literally shout at them and get the work done it takes so much pressure to get even a small work done when you are in the leader position and just look at ananta dev by just his glance he's getting everything done this is the supreme lord's uh, feature it is just inconceivable just by a glance he can get this whole world you know running and not just creating it maintaining is also very difficult maintaining and annihilating it he is doing it so practically the whole world is complete the whole material world is running depending on this uh, ananta dev on his glance and he is glancing sa aikshata he is alone there for that matter because this metal world is not there which means nothing is there so it is only ananta dev alone single handedly you know this you know i kind of you know feel like ananta dev and prabhupada are very you know similar that ananta dev he created this whole material world single handedly just by his glance and shela prabhupada he was also alone when he went to the west you know and single handedly he just went he uh, with the faith in the orders of a spiritual master ananta dev also carries out he creates and maintains this metal world to please the supreme lord and uh, prabhupada is just as powerful as ananta dev for me he went to the west alone he was born in a pure vaishnava family he grew up in a vaishnava culture and at that time india also was very much uh i can say satvik compared to today the culture was very much prevalent vedic culture was prevalent in india and he was staying in vrindavan and he went to the west which was completely of a different culture you know uh completely different and there he went single handedly he was he was completely alone and he started this whole institution of iskon just like ananta dev creates the whole material world is so inconceivable for us that how can just a glance of him you know create this whole world and uh, prabhupada also same similarly inconceivable it is that how single handedly he uh, established this wonderful institution that is spread all over today single handedly he built 108 temples and he 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 uh, preached and he made the westerners who have no idea about vedic culture who have no idea about god who uh, completely are filled with egoism the whole western culture is born from ego and uh, they they always want to be independent and then he made them into devotees and he with the help of them he preached all over west and he came back to india and he established a wonderful uh, society which we see today just as this is the metal world today and we feel it's so inconceivable similarly this iskon we see how big it is today so many devotees in different places are doing online lectures they are hearing they are associating they are getting the books of shila prabhupa they are reading they are becoming devotees so many temples all over the world this deity worship established the lord is there in every uh, city practically and devotees are worshiping him and all this was started by one single man just like ananta ananta says sa aikshata he was alone and that sa there sa he is he is alone ananta dev and by his glance this whole world the material energy the material world the elements the modes they are all being uh, born they are all being created and they are all uh, coming in place and this metal world starts functioning so similarly prabhupada alone and he did this whole thing he created the whole institution so yeah, so that is the power of the glance of the lord and so the point i was trying to make was that the lord his glance he is he is completely inconceivable his power 
you know we cannot by our glass nothing can happen you know even in our own place where we are the lead, suppose we are a leader in one place and we have our own juniors still if we glance at them i don't think they'll understand what we want we have to speak out we have to shout at them and get the work done and the lord his glance is just enough to get the whole uh, creation ready and the same power the same uh supreme power exists in the pure devotees of the lord and they also can do such inconceivable feats not only prabhupad all of our acharyas have done this and so as prabhupad says here so therefore how can any human being however great he may be understand the ways of the supreme personality of godhead we can never understand the only thing we can understand is we can never understand the greatness of the lord the ways of the lord the plan of the lord the only thing we can understand is we can never understand because it's so huge it's so inconceivable and we are just so tiny he is he is the biggest of biggest he is the most inconceivable person is the most powerful powerful person and i am the most insignificant person i mean that we should have understood by now after reading the uh, whole uh, universe structure that how tiny we are how tiny is our earthly planet and in that how tiny is the place that we are staying in be it us or india small country and inside that in a small state small village i am staying in my house and how insignificant i am and how great is the lord who can carry this whole universe on his head so we can at any cost we cannot understand no matter how great we may be we can never understand the ways of the supreme lord so now there are some following other quotations from chaitanya bhagavat so it's just um, so wonderful and so auspicious that today being the appearance day of shri bindavan das thakur it's our duty to glorify him and uh, shri prabhupad by his mercy in this purport itself prabhupad has quoted from chaitanya bhagavat which has been written by shri bindavan das thakur and Vrindavan Das Thakur is going to explain uh, the glories of Ananta Dev, and that is being quoted by Prabhupada. And uh, Vrindavan Das Thakur is just so special. He is the disciple of Nityananda Prabhu, who is uh, from whom Ananta Sesh uh, manifests. Who is the source of Ananta Sesh? That Nityananda Prabhu's disciple is Vrindavan Das Thakur, and Vrindavan Das Thakur had so much love for Nityananda Prabhu, just so much love that in Chaitanya Bhagavat. more than mahaprabhu nityananda uh, vrindavan das thakur glorifies extensively nitai nityananda ram and he has also written so many songs especially nityananda ashtakam glorifying nityananda prabhu and we are just so fortunate on this auspicious day to read chaitanya bhagavat and uh, that do the glories of ananta dev and this all by the mercy of shri prabhupad So let's uh, read what our uh, Vrindavan Das Thakur says about uh, Ananta Dev. Ki Brahma, Ki Shiva, Ki Shanaka Di Kumar, Vyas Shuka Narada Di Bhakta Nam Jar. Lord Brahma, Lord Shiva, the four Kumaras, Sanak Sanatan, Sanandan, and Sanat Kumar, Vyas Dev, Shuka Dev, Goswami, Narada are all pure devotees, eternal servants of the Lord. शबार पूजित श्री अनंत महाशाय सहस्र बदन प्रभु भक्ति रसमाय लॉर्ड श्री अनंत इज वर्शिप बाय ऑल द अनकंटैमिनेटेड डिवोटीज मेंशनड अबव ही हैज थाउजेंड्स ऑफ फूड्स एंड इज द रिजर्वायर ऑफ ऑल डिवोशनल सर्विस आदि देव महाजोगी ईश्वर वैष्णव महिमा रंत इहा न जान यशाब लॉर्ड अनंत इज द ओरिजिनल पर्सन and the great mystic controller at the same time he is a servant of god a vaishnava since there is no end to his glories no one can understand him fully shevan shunila ebe shuma thakural atma tantre jana mate boise na patal i have already spoken to you of his service to the lord now hear how the self sufficient ananta dev exists in the lower planetary systems of patal श्री नारद कोषाय तुम गुरु कोरी संगे जे झाश गायन ब्रह्मा स्थाने लोक श्लोक बंदे बियरिंग हिज स्ट्रिंग इंस्ट्रूमेंट द तुमगुरु ऑन हिज शोल्डर्स द ग्रेट सेज नारद मुनि ऑलवेज ग्लोरीफाइज लॉर्ड अनंता 
Narad Muni has composed many transcendental verses in praise of the Lord. Srishti sthiti pralai sattva adi jata gun jar drishti pate hai hai puna puna. Simply due to the glance of Lord Ananta, the three material modes of nature interact and produce creation, maintenance, and annihilation. These modes of nature appear again and again. Advitiya rupa satya anadi mahatta tathapi ananta hai ke bujheshe tattva. The Lord is glorified as one without a second and as the supreme truth who has no beginning. Therefore, he is called Ananta Dev, unlimited. Who can understand him? Shuddha Sattva Murti Prabhu Dharen Parunai Je Bigrahe Shavar Prakashu Leelai His form is completely spiritual and he manifests it only by his mercy. All the activities in this material world are conducted only in his form. He is very powerful and always prepared to please his personal associates and devotees. If we simply try to engage in the congregational chanting of the glories of Lord Ananta Dev, the dirty things in our hearts accumulated during many births will immediately be washed away. Therefore, a Vaishnava never loses an opportunity to glorify Ananta Dev. Shesha bai, Shesha bai, samsare ro goti nahi yaar. Anante ra name sarva jive ra udhaar. Lord Anantadev is known as Shesha, the unlimited end, because he ends our passage through this material world. Simply by chanting his glories, everyone can be liberated. Ananta prithivi giri samudra sahite. Je Prabhu Dharina Gire Palana Parite. On his head, Anandade sustains the entire universe with its millions of planets containing enormous oceans and mountains. Sahasra Phanaro Eko Phane Bindu Jena. Ananta Vikrama Na Jane Na Che Hano. He is so large and powerful that this universe rests on one of his hoods. Just like a drop of water. He does not know where it is. Sahasravadane Krishna Yasha Nirantar Gaite Achena Radhi Deva Mahidhar. While bearing the universe on one of his hoods, Anantadev chants the glories of Krishna with each of his thousands of mouths. Gayana Ananta Shri Jashera Nahi Anta. Jaya bhanga nahi karu dohe balavanta. Although he has been chanting the glories of Lord Krishna since time immemorial, he still has not come to their end. Adhyapi ho shesha dev sahastra shri mukhe gayena chaitanya jash anta nahi dekhe. To this very day, Lord Ananta continues to sing, to chant the glories of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And still, he finds no end to them. Jai. The Nanda Sakuruti Jai. So, from this uh, uh, section of Vrindavan Dasaka's glorification of Ananta Dev, uh, we can divide the section into two half. One is his uh, Ananta Dev's service to the Lord of this material, of creating and maintaining this material world. And second, his personal uh, interest of glorifying the Lord and how he glorifies the Lord eternally. So if we see Krishna's interest or Krishna's most dear activity is to engage in loving pastimes with his pure devotees in devotional service. And so this whole material world's creation, destruction, maintenance is all given to Anantadev. And Anantadev, as an expansion of the Lord, 
he takes care of this uh, he is in charge of this whole uh, material interaction and this whole material creation and he is the supreme personality of god himself but he out of love he considers himself a servant of the lord and he acts as the topmost servant of krishna he is everything for the lord for the lord's past tense spiritually and materially he is the uh, wonderful great servant of the supreme personality of godhead and his main interest just like krishna's interest is to uh, have loving pastimes with his devotees ananta dev's main interest is to glorify the lord always and so he is doing that with thousands of his mouth you know this is what sanatan goswami aspired for that may i have thousands of mouths to chant the name of the lord and when when uh, when sanatan goswami is chanting he feels that i should be having thousands thousands of mouths to tongues to chant the name of the lord and i should have thousands of ears to hear constantly the names of the lord one tongue and two ears are not enough and ananta ananta dev is practically doing you know he is he is uh, executing that which sanatan goswami aspires for he is having thousands of mouth he is having thousands of ears and he is for uh, time immemorial since time immemorial and to infinite time to go in future he is continuously glorifying the lord what a opulence it is you know to have thousands of mouths thousands of ears and for eternity glorify the lord such a wonderful uh, uh, quality ananta dev is having and is doing this always so that is what his uh, interest is to glorify the lord always and there is mention in this uh, one of these verses that ananta dev he is called shesha why is he called shesha shesha means that is ending you know so why is he called shesha he is called shesha because he ends our passage through this material world so he is ending our passage so how does he do this that's what we are going to see since he is the creator of this world of the three modes of material nature of the material elements of everything in this world he perfectly knows how to take us out also naturally the creator knows everything about his creation now like propad gives an analogy in 1.1.1 uh, that the engineer chief engineer he might not be present in every place but he knows very well because he is the one who planned he is the one who designed he knows what is happening in every nook and corner of the uh, building that is being constructed or is already constructed so similarly you can say that ananta dev he created this material world and so he knows how is what what is where and how to get out of this world also he only knows very naturally so he has this uh, capability to remove us from this world also so when and how will he do that so this is explained that ananta dev is known as kriya shakti that he is in charge of the energy of activities of the lord also so why was this material world created this material world was created to make a place for the jeevas who want to enjoy independent of the lord or in other words the souls we wanted to enjoy ourselves because krishna was the enjoyer we were envious of krishna and we want to enjoy so for that ananta dev has created this world where there are different energies for the so called enjoyment of the jiva because it's, it's it's natural that the jiva cannot enjoy without the lord the jiva is a servant of the supreme lord and his enjoyment is in serving krishna so serving to enjoy without krishna in the picture is impossible so in this material world there is a facility for an enjoyment but actually that is so called enjoyment but as much as possible anandev has arranged for enjoyment so this is the reason why we have come because of our enjoying mentality so first we have to give up this enjoying mentality we have to sincerely try we have to sincerely regret our you know mistake of trying to enjoy without the lord and uh, try to start serving and try to start uh, behaving for the pleasure of the lord so when we give up this enjoying mentality then ananta dev will come to help us ananta dev is there down practically so many miles yojanas below the world but his glance is there everywhere because his material world is sustained by him he is his uh, you know his uh, supervision is there in every part of the world 
and he very well knows what's happening with us what's happening with me what am i thinking and everything so when he knows that one person is sincerely trying to serve the lord he has regretted his mistake he wants to give up his enjoy, enjoying mentality and he is trying to sincerely become a devotee then ananta dev comes to help us and ananta dev he removes the illusion actually it's krishna who is doing all these things but through the medium of ananta dev because ananta dev is shri radha of the lord so there are two kind of activities so kriya shakti the energy of activities is ananta dev so all of us perform kriya we all perform activities so our activities can be basically divided into two one is that which is connected to krishna and that which is not connected to krishna that which is connected to krishna is spiritual activities and that which is not connected to krishna are material activities so when our activities are not connected to krishna what does ananta dev do as the kriya shakti as the energy of the activities he keeps us in illusion he is created metal world and the material world functions puts us in illusion and we see we see everything disconnected from krishna and so that facilitates us in enjoying ourselves and performing activities disconnected from krishna so there is this uh, verse in the chat shloki bhagavatam ऋते अर्थ यत प्रतीयत न प्रतीयत चात्मने तद विद्या दात्मनो मायां यता भाषो यता तमः सो कृष्णा सेज व्हाट इज माया कृष्णा डिफाइन्स इल्यूशन इल्यूशन इज दैट व्हिच यू डोंट सी इन कनेक्शन टू मी व्हेन यू सी एनीथिंग डिस्कनेक्टेड फ्रॉम कृष्णा और यू डोंट सी कृष्णा इन द पिक्चर यू सी दैट थिंग एज एन एलिमेंट ऑफ ऑब्जेक्ट ऑफ एन्जॉयमेंट फॉर मी देन यू आर इन इल्यूशन द मोमेंट यू सी एवरीथिंग इन रिलेशन टू कृष्णा देन यू आर फ्री फ्रॉम इल्यूशन so anand because you want to enjoy you want to do your activity discreted from krishna so he facilitates that as the kriya shakti he keeps you in illusion and you perform your activities but when we realize our mistake and we sincerely want to serve the lord we want to connect our activities with krishna then ananta dev is pleased and as the kriya shakti again as the energy of activities he removes the illusion because he is the one who created we saw in this today's verse is mentioned that by his glance the modes of nature work so it's so easy for him to remove the illusion of the modes of material nature and when he removes the illusion then we see the world in its real form we see reality because we are being illusion all this time and so when the illusion is removed when you are woken up from a dream you come to the reality so then we see what is real and what is reality that is mentioned in the canto 1 of shrimad bhagavatam in vyas dev's vision that he sees the reality and he sees what's going on wrong in this world and then he wrote bhagavatam for that purpose so in that uh, set of verses vision of vyas dev the reality is ex- is explained that uh, bhakti yogena manasi samyak pranihite male अपश्य पुरुषम पूर्णम माया चतत अपाश्रयम दैट दिस वाज सेड व्हेन ही वाज इन डिवोशन भक्ति योगेन मनसि व्यासदेव सॉ व्हाट डिड ही सी अपश्य पुरुषम पूर्णम द सुप्रीम पर्सनलिटी ऑफ गॉड हैड अलूफ ऑन टॉप एंड माया चतत अपाश्रयम द मटेरियल एनर्जी माया शी वाज वेल अंडर हिज कंट्रोल सुप्रीम लॉर्ड इज देयर एंड माया इज अंडर हिज कंट्रोल The second verse says, "Yaya sammohito jivo atmanam trivunatmakam paropi manute nartham tat karma chavipode." So there is the second verse or the Maya under his full control, and then he sees that the jivas they have been illusioned. yaya samohito jivo yaya by who by this maya maya is under krishna's control but that maya is illusioning the jiva and the jiva being illusioned by maya he thinks himself under the three modes and therefore he is suffering so this is the reality and as they also saw the means that of course the jiva is thinking himself illusion when he comes out of illusion he understands that he is also under krishna and his duty is to serve krishna 
so this is reality the it's a, it's a very golden triangle the supreme lord maya jiva both are under the supreme lord but this jiva considers himself under maya actually he is not under maya he is not under illusion he is actually under krishna directly so this reality is what anantadev reveals to us this is what we'll understand when the illusion is taken off when this yaya sammohito jiva when this sammohita when this bewilderment is removed when we understand that we are not under maya then we see the supreme lord as purusham purnam and maya is his energy then from chaitanya charitamrita we understand that the jiva understands real position um krishner nitya das jiva ra swarup hoy krishner nitya das so this understanding comes and this is given by anantadev so there is also in one of these verses of chaitanya of chaitanya bhagavat it's uh, mentioned that he destroys just by chanting the names of ananta the dirty things in our heart accumulated during many births ashesha janmera bandho chinde shekshane so they will all be washed so what is this dirty things accumulated in our in our heart uh, through many years or during many births it is this enjoying mentality that since time immemorial we are thinking i want to enjoy and in all different bodies that we are accepting we are going on with the same uh, desire that i want to enjoy and enjoying in all possible ways we can so this dirt is removed this enjoying mentality anant dev will remove also and born from this enjoying mentality is the material desires which lead to all other anarthas so the anartha such as um, greed anger lust these are all born from material desires and material desires are born from this mentality of enjoyment so this root cause which is accumulated in our heart over so many births that dirt is cleaned by ananta dev just by chanting his name that's why we should you know chant the names of nityananda prabhu take a shelter cuz he has this potency to do this wonderful uh, wonderful thing for the jeevas for the well being of the jeevas and this is why he is called shesha he ends our material bondage he is capable being the kriya shakti being the controller and the sustainer and the maintainer of this material world he knows how to remove us from this he is creating the material world and he also knows the purpose beyond the for which this material world is created to take the jeevas back from back to god so when the jeeva is eager very important the jeeva should be eager we should want to go back from back to god then anantadev will very wonderfully facilitate and he will act as shesha he will uh, end our passage through this material world and therefore he himself is chanting the names of the lord all ways and he will encourage us we we can we can actually please anantadev to receive his mercy by chanting the names of the lord chanting the glories of the lord and which he himself is doing since time immemorial and because of his this activity or his glory that he is the creator and he can take people out of the material world also and because of his uh, wonderful quality as the supreme devotee of the lord all the great devotees such as shiva narada shukadev um manus everyone the sanat kumaras they all you know they glorify uh, anantadev i mean we would have come across in so many prayers anywhere you go different prayers one sentence will be there that who can understand the inconceivable nature of the lord which anantadev is singing in a, in thousands of his mouth and he has yet not come to an end this sentence will be there practically in uh, all the prayers you know so everyone knows the glory of ananta that he is always glorifying the lord and for this reason only all the great devotees of the lord they also glorify anantadev and they are also so pleased and so uh, feel fortunate by this quality of anantadev that he is always chanting in fact the sanat kumaras they are always there with anantadev down under the planetary system and they are hearing from anantadev the glories of the lord and anantadev has also recited this ananta samhita that's one of the uh, when anantadev is speaking an important uh, composition by him is ananta samhita anyone knows what ananta samhita deals with something very very special especially for gaudiya vaishnavas
So Ananda Samhita deals with Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's glories personally. It deals with this was uh, the last verse of of what Prabhupada has quoted in this uh, purport from Vrindavan Das Thakur is Adya Piho Shesha Dev Sahasra Shri Mukhe Gayana Chaitanya Yash Anta Nahi Deke. To this very day, Lord Ananta continues to chant the glories of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and he still finds no end to them. This is something very special of Vrindavan Das Thakur that everywhere you will read that Ananta Dev glorifies Supreme Lord, but Vrindavan Das Thakur he says Ananta Dev he is eternally glorifying Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So there is this book called Ananta Samhita. It's a composition by Ananta Dev. That this comes in Navadya Dham Mahatmya. That once Ananta Dev he desired to see Radha and Krishna's pastimes. So he went to Shweta Dvip. He went to where the law Vishnu is Mahavishnu is lying down, and he went and told him that I want to go and see Radha Krishna's uh, uh, pastimes in Golokas. Can you please help me to go there? So that time um, the Lord says that what are you asking? I myself have don't have the permission to go to Goloka. So I cannot give you the permission. The only person who can take you to Goloka very easily and give you entrance into Radha Krishna's pastimes is Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So you go to Navadvipa where Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is performing pastimes eternally. Gauranga Hari Gaurasundar is there, and by his mercy, anyone. Can easily attain Goloka, which is so rare that even Vishnu cannot go to. So then Ananda Dev comes to Navadvip and he takes shelter of Gauranga Mahaprabhu. He does penance for many years and he gets the darshan of Gauranga Mahaprabhu. And Gauranga reveals to him the glories of Navadvip Dham, his most intimate uh, uh, desires and pastimes. And that is what Ananda Dev actually Gaurachandra orders Ananda Dev to uh, compose the Samhita. Like Brahma Samhita, he tells him compose a Samhita that glorifies my pastimes and my abode of Navadhi. And then Ananta Dev composes very wonderful Samhita. It is that glorifies Navadhi Dham so beautifully, the real beauty of Navadhi Dham, the real glories of Navadhi Dham, and how Navadhi Dham was born from Srimati Radharani. That whole pastime, everything comes from Ananta Samhita. And uh, Ananta Samhita also has the life of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, his birth, his childhood pastimes, everything is very wonderfully described. And how Ananta Samhita comes to us is Shiva and Parvati discuss. So how did Lord Shiva get Ananta Samhita? It stated that when uh, Lord Shiva drank the poison from the ocean during Samudra Manthan, his throat was burning a lot. And... Uh, he wanted a, he wanted to you know calm down his throat. He wanted to get a soothing feel. So that time Ananta Dev he, he asked Ananta Dev, and Ananta Dev told chant this Ananta Samhita. He taught him the Samhita, which describes which glorifies Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Gauranga, uh, which glorifies Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. His pastimes associates his holy abode and the pastimes of Radha and Krishna, and he told you chant this. So when when Lord Shiva received Ananta Samhita in his throat, he began to recite it. Then his throat became cooling because of the chanting and he, uh, getting the glories of Sri Gaurahari and Sri Navadhi Dham. So this is one another important uh, uh, prominent service of Ananta Dev that he has given us the knowledge of Navadhi Dham, the knowledge of Sri Gauranga Mahaprabhu. And Ananta Dev is very, very, uh, so we have seen you know, this, these verses itself that were Rindam Das Thakur sings. It explains to us how crucial in the life of a sadhaka as a practicing devotee is Ananta Dev. He has such important role of removing the illusion and he himself possesses devotion service to the Lord. So he's capable of giving it. So with no further delay, we should take shelter of Ananta Dev and request him. Ananta Dev is present. Ananta Dev manifests from Sri Nityananda Prabhu. Chaitanya Charitamata Krishnadas Tavaras Goswami in Adi Leela, chapter 1, he glorifies Nityananda Prabhu. Sankarshana Karana Toeshai, Garbho Dashai, Chapio Dishai, Shesha Sayasyam Sakala, San Nityananda Ramam Prabhupati. I offer obeisances so that Nityananda Prabhu, from whom manifest Garbho Dakashai, Shiro Dakashai, Sankarshan, Shesha. Ananda Sesha also manifests from uh, Nityananda Prabhu. So that Nityananda Prabhu himself is there in front of us, and by Prabhupada's mercy, we have gone with that. So we should take shelter of Nityananda Prabhu. This is stressed by all the acharyas in our line. 
Narada several songs, Krishna Skavraj Goswami Shaitanya Charitamrita, Srila Prabhupada himself, that how Nityananda Prabhu's lotus feet is our only shelter because he performs his role in various ways as Sankarshan, as Ananta, as Sesha, and he has the uh, he has the responsibility and he has the capability to remove our illusion, to purify our hearts, to give us devotional service, and to take us back from back to Godhead. So I thank uh, all of you for patiently hearing and tolerating me for this long. And also I thank all of you for giving me a chance to glorify Ananta Dev uh, from Srimad Bhagavatam. And uh, on this auspicious day, I could also read Chaitanya Bhagavat and uh, you know, uh, express my gratitude to Vrindavan Das Thakur, whose appearance day is today. And I'm, I'm very thankful to all of you for giving me this opportunity to glorify Ananta Dev, who is so glorious. It's, 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 it's just impossible to glorify him sufficiently. I have mean, not even done a drop for him who carries the whole middle world like a drop of water on his head. We can't even glorify uh, even one drop properly of his glories, which is so inconceivable. Shri Ananta Dev ki jai, Shri Nityananda Prabhu ki jai, Shri La Prabhupada ki jai. Hare Krishna Mataji. What an amazing class, Mataji. Very beautiful class. Thank you so much. Interactive at a times. Very nice explanation about uh, Ananta Deva. And an amazing summary of uh, Srimad Bhagavatam, starting from Canto 1. You gave us a plot. Even if any devotee has joined, I think, first time, they could understand what we are talking. So, such a beautiful start of the class. And thanks for uh, uh, glorifying uh, Srila Vrindavan Das Thakur on his appearance day. That just happened in the verse too. I don't think I have uh, enough qualification even to glorify your class. Such an amazing class. It actually seemed like a class in the class. <laughs> you did all uh, summary of Srimad Bhagavatam. That was beautiful. The whole class was nectarian actually. But I loved your point of uh, comparing our dear most Srila Prabhupada to Anantadev, how he is uh, compared to Anantadev. And I think uh, his position uh, is so high because he's the one who connected us to Anantadev. Otherwise, who were we? We were just uh, in, uh, in this world of Maya. I'm glad you were born to a devotee family. So that's uh, such a big privilege. And you talk about the glance. With our glance, our own kids won't move. What to speak about anything else? So, so let's not talk about our glance. So, your glance is amazing. And your class shows, Mataji, how much you are dedicated to this mission through your preaching skills. Such a beautiful class, Mataji. Thank you so much for, for coming on the call. There are already some hands raised. Uh, Anita Mataji, you can please unmute yourself. Thank you. Hare Krishna. <coughs> Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Hare Krishna Mataji. Please accept my obeisances. Thank you so much Mataji for giving your time and association. It was such a glorified, uh, such a wonderful nectarian class. Uh, so that is uh, like you just uh, recapped the whole Srimad Bhagavan. That is what uh, I liked so much. Every time you come, you just recap the whole chapter or the whole uh, uh, what are the canto? So that that's where uh, that even as you told that we uh, will forget the Bhagavadam is very much uh, big that we will forget the flow when we go move on to the next verse or next canto. So thank you for uh, first of all my thanks for recapping that. And then as uh, Raj Prabhuji told, uh, the comparison between uh, Srila Prabhupada and uh, uh, Ananta Dev was uh, really very nice, Mataji. So that was a different vision. So and uh, then uh, about um, about the um, Ananta Samhita, which you told us. So this one, I, I didn't hear. Maybe it must be there, but I, I don't know about it. So thank you so much for uh, uh, taking that and uh, taking your time and uh, giving some points about it. Thank you so much, Mataji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Nita Mataji. Very nice points. Uh, Brinda Gopika Mataji, please go ahead and unmute yourself. Thank you, Raj Prabhu Denver. Hare Mata Krishna Mataji, Koti Koti Denver Pranam, Shila Prabhupada Silvadev, Shirada Gopinath Ki Jai, Jai Jai Nityananda, Jai Jai Kauranga. So much potency in your class, Mataji. Me and my daughter every day here uh, at Jai Bataka Maharaj Vani uh, at uh, night uh, after 6.30 when she complete her job. 
Mata ji, exactly uh, you are uh, reading the verses. Uh, the senior uh, Brahmachari is reading verses. So nice, Mata ji. Feel that sitting in Shishi Mayapur Dham, Shishi Rata Madhav temple and get blessing from that senior Brahmachari. Every day he is reciting verses exactly like that you teach us, Mata ji. So much potency. We learn very simple way you explain uh, first Kanto, Mata ji. Um, Shri De, uh, Devahuti and all the Shishi, Sheshanag Lila and um, the birth, date and old age and disease and uh, so nicely explain the one certain living life and uh, live life, how to live with life, how to digest Shishi Bhagavatam. That we learn from you, like our Edgy Prithivilasani Edgy, Kitsida Sundri Edgy, Lalitangi Mataji, they are the base of Bhakti Sangha. Uh, Mataji, so much potency, no words to explain our hum kese explain kare hamari hamari hamara jo bhao hai wo Mataji. Pray for us that ye sir hamesa santo or bhakto ki sharan me namarai. We get such a strong association like you, Mataji. Koti Koti Dandrut Panam for behalf of all Vaishnava and Bhakti Sangha teachers. Hare Krishna Mataji, thank you very much. Thank you very much for your association and blessing. Thank you very much, Vrinda Gopika Mataji. Very beautiful and nice comment. So true, Mataji. Uh, Avatarini Mataji, please go ahead and unmute yourself. Hare Krishna, Hare Bhul, Hare Krishna, Ma Pranams. Like, so, Oh, uh, Prabhuji and Mataji already glorified whatever I really wanted to. Uh, uh, the one thing is like a wonderful recitation of all the verses of uh, Chaitanya Bhagavat and um, in that meter and also wonderful pronunciation of Bengali Paka, perfect Bengali <laughs> pronunciation. I really admired it and of course um, the glorification of Ananta Deva and uh, also like uh, uh, Gaurachandra ordering Ananta Dev to write the Ananta Samhita. So these are all the news. First time I'm also hearing. Thanks for the wonderful class, Ma. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Bhavatarani Mataji. So true. It was I was relishing too when Mataji was reciting the following verses. It was so beautiful to listen in, in Bengali. You know, that accent was so amazing. Thank you, Mataji. Very, very, very good point. Uh, Sureshwar Prabhu, please go ahead. Yeah, Hare Krishna Mataji, Dandavad Pranam Mataji. Yeah, <clears throat> like everybody was saying, the class was flowing like Ganges very nicely. So, Mataji, my one question I have like we say that um, uh, Karno Daksha Vishnu's glance uh, that created these uh, universes and then further thing happened from Pradhan and all that, right, Mataji? Now, here we are seeing it's saying Ananta Dev's glance. So how do we understand that, Mataji? Uh, very nice question, Prabhu. Yes, we hear that this Karna Dakshai Vishnu's plans <clears throat> that causes the material universe to explain to Srimad Bhagavatam itself. And we also understand, uh, especially from uh, Sri Chaitanya Charita Amrita, that Sri uh, Balram is the cause of... Uh, all these incarnations, Shira Dakshai, Karna Dakshai, Garbha Dakshai, all of them. And when we go through that verse of Adirila, or rather in Adirila, the explanation of Nityananda Prabhu's uh, uh, tattwa, in that it explained that how this, um, uh, how they come one after another, or how Krishna expands as Balram, and then how Balram expands as uh, the four Chaturvyuha personalities. And then Sankarshan from that Chaturvyuha, he is the one who expands in the material world as all these different uh, manifestations. So in that terms, all these manifestations, all of Garbho Dakshai, Chiro Dakshai, Karnu Dakshai, they all come from uh, Sankarshan Prabhu himself. So uh, Ananta Dev is also from Sankarshan. And Sankarshan as Ananta, or the glance is actually done by Ananta Dev. But to be frank, uh, I have not gone much into Shaitanya Shaita Amrita and I am not very sure about these um, uh, details of how, whose glance and how creation it was. But my understanding when I read this was that is Ananta's glance. So it, it uh, represents the, I accepted it as Sankarshan is uh, of Shaturvyuha 
he is the personality who does all these things and he is expanding as karna daksha ananta all of them so in that way i understood that yes it must all be his uh his expansions only and it's all is his act only but yes i can ask this question to some senior devotees and i can get back with answer to one of you or you can also go through chaitanya charitamrita to get a better understanding is it fine for you yes mata ji thank you thank you very much mata ji hari krishna mata ji dhanyawad prana thank you sureshwar prabhu for beautiful question and thank you mata ji for a nice answer saying that you will inquire from our senior vaishnavas and then come back to prabhu thank you so much dear vinit mata ji is there mata ji was so excited about your visit about your class so i am pretty sure she has something to say please go ahead vinit mata ji hari krishna mata ji dhanyavad pranam already raj prabhu and anitha mata ji has glorified the class whatever i have to speak thank you mata ji thank you so much i really like the idea of the summary um that uh, we have to uh, see where we are because we are keep reading and we are losing all the memory kaliyuga memory is gone and we don't know what happened yesterday also <laughs> so it is good mata ji thank you so much for the summary and uh, bringing to the point that it is very nice to hear from you chetna charitamrita and shrimad bhagavatam we were planning to call you for chetna chetna bhagavat one time and it is coincidentally both together you had did it i mean it is all krishna's mercy thank you thank you so much mata ji uh, for your time and association this morning and very very grateful to you hari krishna thank you so much mata ji i must say vinita ma ji has helped me so much in my most important uh, time of difficulty in my service we were doing the virtual uh, puri parikrama right mata ji yes yes ma'am. and at that time i was having a problem with the video editing and putting different voice over and it was it was like one or two days before the telecast and it was mata ji who came to my help i was just asking all my friends do you know any video editor do you know any person who can edit the sound and fit the sound because we wanted to put the parikrama in different languages and somehow one of my friend gave me the contact of mata ji and i got in touch and she was willing to serve immediately she said it's guru maharaj's service and she was ready to do and it was actually by her service at that time at time the help to me that i could we could um, you know telecast puri parikrama virtual online in right in time in the different languages spanish and all these languages and mata ji's service attitude is always very inspiring for me and when i i also came to know that you are hosting this and i was also very excited to meet you so we have contacted in voice many times i'm seeing you for the second time i think i saw you once in guru mai zoom class and now i'm speaking to you seeing you for the first time so i'm also very excited thank you mata ji thank you so much for giving me opportunity to serve uh, for the puri yatra it was very nice uh, thank you mata ji thank you so much hari krishna jai ho hari hari gaurang garden par beta one more Thank thing you. i would like to add would be that all of you glorified this uh, reading of chaitanya bhagavat that i did in the bengali accent and all the um, whatever you said all goes to his holiness gauranga prem swami maharaj from whom i learned this uh, way of reciting chaitanya bhagavat and i also learned that we should develop love for chaitanya bhagavat gauranga prem maharaj is a disciple of chaitanya swami maharaj and he is uh he is a person who is always submerged in the past lives of gauranga mahaprabhu guru maharaj given in the name correctly very aptly gauranga prem swami he is always you know in the love of gauranga he maharaj very much belongs to navadeep dham his service is to establish nam hatta and maharaj he regularly gives uh, bengali classes he speaks only bengali mostly and he is the one who Uh, reads and he he sings chaitanya bhagavat in this traditional bengali tune in bengali accent so it is from him that i uh, imbibed this uh, tune and uh, accent and i also pray that i get the love that he has for chaitanya bhagavat that all the glories goes to him and whatever you all mentioned of different analogies or different points that i mentioned in the class they are all heard and uh, what i heard from my different senior shiksha gurus and different devotees in mayapur and all around and all the glories goes to them i just uh, spoke what i heard from them i just repeated it so 
the thing that i did um, the only thing that i did good was i have put everything properly through what i heard so it has made sense to all of you and i'm very 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 grateful and thankful to the lord for uh, making me uh, speak properly so thank you so much so true mata ji our love uh, towards our guru our uh, love towards the devotee is a real indicator how we are progressing in our bhakti so true mata ji i'm talking about vinita mata ji she is helpful to everyone in bhakti sangha like i personally sometime before services can text her like five times what to do what not to do and she is always there to help me out and help everybody out so this is um, how her attitude is uh, mata ji there is a small question in chat box from pooja mata ji uh she's asking her son dev is a devotee of lord shiva and she wants uh, him to become a devotee so is this a material desire please throw some light son is a disciple a devotee of lord shiva she mm-hmm. wants him to become a devotee of lord krishna so yes. is this a material desire of course no it's not a material desire how can it be a material desire when you want to engage someone in krishna service so something is material or illusion as i mentioned in the class when you disconnect it from krishna hriday artham yat pratiyata na pratiyata chatmani when you see something away from krishna then it is maya when you want to connect something to krishna it can never be maya so that is it's not a material desire at all but yes it's very sensitive to how you put it through your son and how you make him a devotee because that is where most devotees make the mistake they try to force it upon and it and it uh, it, it it puts through um, it brings the wrong uh, result than what we expect so the way you put it through to your son is different but this desire is absolutely not material it's of course spiritual to uh, the desire to engage your son in krishna service so true mata ji so true uh, our beloved uh, amogalila prabhu his grace amogalila prabhu was a disciple of shiva too and we all know wow where amogalila prabhu is standing today so hopefully mata ji sun dev one day will join bhakti sang every day let's hope that hari bol so dear devotees if anybody has any more questions or realizations please go ahead otherwise uh, mata ji with your permission we'll end the class uh, sorry prabhu ji i want to ask something sundari gopi mata ji mata ji go ahead please Mother, uh, sorry, I missed the introduction part. I just heard that. Are you from Mayapur? Yes, Mother, I you serve in Mayapur. Mayapur. You have kids and all in uh, living in Mayapur. Your kids? Uh, I don't have kids. I'm not yet married, but okay. uh, we have children. Okay. We have okay. we have of course we have so many families living in Mayapur. We have five thousand community members here. We have lot of children. playing around and staying we have two schools in mayapur children are studying here okay 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 so i, I mean i i i don't know i mean uh, we always uh, people who are from outside uh, the ham we always keep dream that you know some day we will go stay in the dam some day we will stay. so you know um, i mean could you tell how has been your experience so that we get more inspired i mean i am inspired i want to inspire my husband also let's let's go let you know some some time in our life that if we could stay there so could you inspire something tell me tell us something about the dham life and all how do you feel that you know some some people like i don't want to leave the dham at all so you know if you could say some words uh, for our inspiration shyar is always my pleasure to uh, glorify the lord and his abode so uh, navadeep dham as mentioned ananta samhita is so special it has come from shrimati radharani herself and uh, mayapur which is a part of navadeep dham is the place where shri chaitanya mahaprabhu incarnated and the influence of that can still be felt here it now felt all over the world but more so in mayapur uh, atul krishna prabhu my shiksha guru he always says that what an opulence it is to live in mayapur when you go to the material world you'll understand that in a metal world in any city you go uh, there you will be surrounded by non devotees in your building in your apartment other houses are non devotees and you can't do kirtan loud in some places or even if you do kirtan loud you don't have association of devotees and he says that what an opulence you have in mayapur just you need to count your blessings that in mayapur i am now in this house in my house if i look at just and if i look out of my window here then these are all houses of devotees 
and they're all devotees and during sandhyarthi times we hear the kirtan in different houses there are nagar kirtans going around just devotees all around what an opulence it is to have so much devotee association lava matra sadhu sangha sarva siddhi hoy and here you have not lava you have your whole day in a station of devotees you have so many mayapur is the international headquarters and so all the senior disciples of prabhupad devotees from all over the world they all regularly at least once a year they come to mayapur in fact it is the desire of prabhupad prabhupad established the mayapur vrindavan festival for this reason that every iskon devotee they have to come to mayapur at least once a year they have to come and spend their time get the strength to preach and go to uh, different parts of the world and continue their preaching so mayapur is a must visit place for every devotee at least in iskon they have to visit mayapur they are all following chaitanya mahaprabhu so we get you know uh, we might not go to different parts of the world and build relation with different devotees but all the devotees come here and so you ask any mayapur devotee they'll be having some friend who exists in all parts of the world you know like i know one devotee in usa i know one devotee in uk because they all come to mayapur so mayapur is like a hub for us and for staying here it's just so nice uh prabhupada said every day in mayapur for radha madhava who are the king and queen of mayapur and because mayapur is the international headquarters so shri shri radha madhava are like the emperor of entire iskon because they are the king and queen of the headquarters so they should be having festivals every day at least 65 days and recently we made a count of how many festivals we have in the year and we have 290 festivals or something so we have so many festival and we are working on to make it 365 days festivals so we have so many festivals every festival is celebrated in a small way or big way we have celebration here with the community when it is the appearance day of advaita acharya shrivas thakur nityananda prabhu gadadhar pandit we have panchatva deities in our altar and we have abhishekam of them we have glorification and the theatre is celebrated wonderfully we have so many festivals now in mayapur there are so many festivals going on you know uh, it started with uh, chatan yatra summer so akshay tritya day festival started uh, the lord radha madhava was given full chandan all over body for seven days that itself is a festival every day morning we go to the temple dashra at 8 o'clock and the lord is given chandan it's so nice the our madhava is black we see him all year through in black and when he wears chandan he just transforms so beautifully and we have chota radha madhav who is given vesha every day you know for for the seven day they are given different veshas raja dhiraja he is decorated like a king then we have ramachandra where chota madhav is given green chandan and he is he looks so beautiful he has a bow and arrow in his hand radha ni can transform sita devi and there is vana bhojana one day when the lord is in the forest there is all no all the cowherd boys are there and cows are there and they're all eating so these are all depicted in the altar itself and it's just so beautiful to go and see that that finish seven days then started the boat festival every day evening you would go to the boat 5 o'clock boat would start uh, radha madhav would go on the boat uh, come in the samadhi prabhu samadhi we have a pond where radha madhav go in a boat and devotees we can make offerings so we cook we go and take it we give it in the boat radha madhav is uh, offered bhoga and then we get it back and then radha madhav come up to a swing and then we all stand in line and we all get a uh, chance to pull the swing of shri radha madhava and there is a wonderful bhajan kirtan going on the whole atmosphere is just like it is just like goloka you know you can get a glimpse of how it is when the lord radha krishna's past time happened in the spiritual world the sakhis are all you know swinging and then radha madhav go back home we can accompany the lord in palanquin and boat festival finished for 7 days then we start, then came narsimha jayanti then after narsimha jayanti finished now we have narsimha day we had abhishek i love abhishek and then came uh, a salil vihar started salil vihar is when we have shri shri radha govinda deities the in front of radha madhava altar there is a flower canopy made and there is a small st- uh, lotus stand for radha govinda to sit and in front of them under the canopy there is a waterfall uh there is a fountain sorry had a waterfall so in a pond of water there is a waterfall and a flower canopy and between that shri radha govinda sit and we all stand in line queue and we are given lotus festival uh, lotus flowers with tulasi inside 
and when you come ahead one devotee will recite one name of radharani or madhava like uh, yesterday i got the name um, vidyut gauri vidyut gauri namaha so with the lotus we recite that uh, name and we offer the lotus so after some time the whole you know pond is covered with lotus and radha govinda sitting in center and then this is one festival that happens every day evening it started after narasimha jayanti and is going to go on every day till uh, snan yatra so every day evening now after the class i'll be going there so you go and uh, offer lotus so like this every day there is festival now after this finishes after suddenly we have finishes snan yatra will come after snan yatra rath yatra and after rath yatra we have uh, jolan yatra and then there is balram jayanti jolan yatra completes with balram jayanti jolan yatra is so beautiful we have a whole area decorated like a forest and we have jolan there we have breaking the honey pot for balram jayanti then janmashtami will come so like this there is you know non stop festivals going on and we have the chance to participate in festivals by making flower garlands dry fruit garlands cooking for the lord making rangoli on the pathways so it's it's, it's just the spiritual world actually and it's actually you can say it's a kind of sense gratification living here you know it's not uh, you know sometimes people think that oh you are in mayapur you are in the dham you are you know renounced everything and all we are just enjoying here like anything and So, but yeah, so therefore, it's it's very it's it's just so special and such an opulence. Living in the dham is a very is very much an opulence. It's not any renunciation or something. It we have everything that you have in the material world, and we have something better. We have the supreme Lord here, and He is taking us into His pastimes. We have such wonderful devotees, Chennivas Prabhu, Pankaj Angi Prabhu, belong to Mayapur, and they are themselves a festival in themselves. You know, we see Him every day. and his glance getting his mercy hey mayapur is so opulent we have so many feasts every festival has a feast and we have wonderful prasadam we have so many devotees so some devotee keeps inviting each other to their home for prasadam so there is practically feast every day every week there is a feast at least even if not every day every week there is one feast for sure it is just so opulent mahaji mayapur is So oh, nice, Mata Ji. So nice, very wonderful, and you are so blessed to be in Sri Dhammayapur. And thank you so much for sharing all this uh, uh, experience with us. Thank you so much, yes. Mata Ji, for sharing. Yeah. So and so uh, yeah, so we could please yes, come ma'am. to Mayapur at least once uh, every year, not once in your lifetime. Once every year, you come to Mayapur, and I serve in Mayapur tourism. My service is when visiting devotees come. to serve them that is my service here in mayapur so if you are coming Devon. please for your know. association we will surely come please pray for us mata ji that and we should we visit we should take you around to the different places in navadvipa and uh, also in gaura mandala there is so many places to see here even one month is not sufficient to see all the places i am here for 17 mm. years and i still have not been all the places i am still trying to go and see So, but Mata Ji, you're you're just celebrating, Mata Ji. A whole year you are celebrating. So nice, so nice. Thank you so much. It's really wonderful. You're in Gola Ka Dham only actually. Thank you so much for sharing, Mata Ji. Hare Krishna. Um, uh, sorry, Mata Ji, there Hare is Krishna. one hand raise. Hare Krishna. This is Sukhakar Krishna Das from Chennai. So. This uh, small girl, I know from the day one, day from the day she is born, because uh, her father came to Iskon in nineteen ninety three, in nineteen ninety two in Muscat. When he came just to visit me to just give me a happy birthday, he gave me some gift. From that day he started coming for classes. Then slowly Prabhu came, then Mata Ji took some more time, but then we came to Sharja from Muscat to Sharja. From there. Uh, 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 our antaranga is born and from that time her name was given as anjana i told your name should be radhika and they put as radhika and uh, from that time she has been a, a like a uh, definitely a race a ray of vishnu nothing else other than that and then uh, the, their parents they shifted to mayapur and from that point now antaranga says i will never leave mayapur whoever is there i will stay in mayapur till my end so like that so much of uh, uh, 
faith in Radha Madhav that you know she cannot leave, and Radha Madhav will also not leave her. And I am sure she is going to uh, preach all over the world with the excellence. She knows Sanskrit. She is a graduate in Sanskrit. She can give class in Sanskrit. And I can Bangla ko bhalo kore katha bolte pare kano. I can Maya pore ato bocha rache shatro bashor Bangla sikhe niye chhe. And our Guru Maharaj always says that uh, everybody should learn Bengali because then only Gauran Gauru Chandra will be like him. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Tabe la apnaro shobai Bangla sikte puri purishram korben. Kano Bangla aur Hindi mudde bechi tapat nahi. Bengali and Hindi are very very close. Tumar naam ki ham kate aur Bengali mein tumar naam kya hai tumar naam ki. So all of you just plan so that there will be everybody will be called to Mayapur and we can be with Antaranga only. And definitely go back on back to God at the end of this life. This Sukhakar Krishna Das. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much, Sukhakar Prabhuji. Thank you for coming on the call, and uh, thank you for your association also. So yes, uh, she is very much uh, your daughter only actually, Antaranga Mataji. So uh, you are also my daughter. You. you are also my daughter. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Thank you so much for giving me that privilege. So, yes, Prabhuji, as you said, uh, we all should go to Mayapur uh, to get the association of Mataji. Hare Krishna. And Bengali is the sweetest language. Ato shundar bhasha, like a musical language. Next to the Bengali is Malayalam. Like with anything related to Sanskrit is very sweet. Bengali is very close to Sanskrit. Okay, thank you. Yes. Sorry for taking so much time. But I wanted to glorify my daughter. That's all. Hare Krishna. Krishna Mati Rastu, Antaranga Tulsi. Thank you, Prabhu. Thank you. Thank you so much, actually, for uh, coming in and thank you for uh, everything that you said. Uh, Bengali is certainly beautiful. I don't know, but I can say, Moro, Moro Nam Tumoro Das. I'm your servant. <laughs> I don't know how that Bengali was. <laughs> I'm pure. I'm very, I'm, I'm Oki Gale Paji Tasiya Kale. I speak around 18 languages, 18 languages. Foreign languages, Arabic, French, because my Guru Maharaj told, your name is Sukhakar Krishnada. So you have to keep talking all the languages. Because in Mayapur, thousand, one lakh people will come every day. So I'm still trying to learn Chinese now. The next on the move. Very good, very good. And Antaranga Mataji speaks very nice uh, Sanskrit also, Prabhuji. Yeah, she can give class she in Sanskrit. Very well. Oh. I, I should thank one, one more thing. This Sangha, like, uh, Anita Mataji only called me. I'm so now addicted Last week, Amog Lila Prabhu said, I heard now this. So please take me in your family. That's all. <laughs> Hare Krishna Prabhu Ji, please. Uh, you, are, you should not say that you are always welcome. You are always there Thank with you. us. Thank yes, you very Prabhu. much. Yes, Prabhu. And we the way need Raj, Raj, actually, Prabhu. We need Raj Prabhu, Prabhu. The way Raj Prabhu speaks, I really love the way you talk. It's so nice, so much affectionate, with so much of Krishna Prem in it. With nothing, Prabhu. Prabhu we need your association, please, devotee, and your blessings. Actually, please. Shukrakar Prabhuji is very senior devotee uh, and he uh, found so many uh, uh, his con associations, uh, yatras in Sharjah, all over in UAE, in Gulf countries. So he is very senior devotee actually. Thank you so much for uh, coming on the call Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Thank you Anita Maji. Thank you Antaranga Maji. Thank you Raj Prabhu. All the best. Thank you Prabhu. Please keep blessing us please. Uh, please. Please keep calling me. I'll come for all the programs. Hare Prabhuji. You please come every day. <coughs> Give us your Hare message. Krishna. Hare Krishna. Uh, Hare Krishna. Mataji, uh, you have time for one more question. There is a small question in chat box from Sukha Mataji. She's a very sure. regular attendee and devotee. A nice devotee. So Sukha Mataji is asking Hare Krishna Mataji, just one question. With so many devotees, with so many festivals, how do devotees make a living? I'm sure Shri Shri Radha Madhav arranged for everything, but would like to know, uh, especially Grasta families with children, so how they make a living. Okay, in Mayapur. So, mm -hmm. yeah, in Mayapur is so well established that we have so many services in Mayapur itself. So, uh, devotees, so basically the devotees in Mayapur, there are uh, different varieties of families who have their livelihoods in different ways. Some of them have like uh, have retirement plans in Mayapur, so they earn enough uh, for what they want to spend in Mayapur in the end of their life. So they earn and then they come and settle in Mayapur and they uh, don't take up any particular service in Mayapur. Rather, they chant and hear Bhagavatam class and they spend their life with pure devotee service. And then there are uh, devotees who, um, we also have devotees 
who like their husbands live in uh, different parts of the world uh, earning their livelihood and they want their family to stay in mayapur and grow up with mayapur children also so they are they like that also there, there are some and then we also have families who have come to mayapur in a very young age itself and they take up uh, they want to stay in the dham that's it so they might either have a bank balance which is sufficient to take care of them or there are different services available in mayapur the management provides services uh, because we have such a big uh, temple established we have guest house restaurant uh, preaching services a lot of services are there it treasury so they take some service and the temple also pays them a minimum maintenance by which they can maintain and they can serve the temple so these are some ways and uh, Um, but there is one thing that, of course, the material uh, balance, bank balance is needed. But more than that, it is the Lord who desire decides whether to keep you or not. So no matter what maintenance you have, you might have a lot of bank balance, everything ready. But uh, staying in the dham, in the dham is allowed only by Gauranga Mahaprabhu, and he is the one who maintains us in the dham. Even if we have a lot of money, there can be chances that if the Lord doesn't want to maintain you, you will have nothing. and if you have nothing there are different families in mayapur that i have seen who have nothing who practically have no money they have no place to stay they come to the dham and chaitanya mahaprabhu maintains them so that shows that what we have actually doesn't maintain us in the dham but is a lord's mercy that maintains the people in the devotees in the dham so true mata ji very last your point is just amazing if there is no will of shri gauranga mahaprabhu we, we can't go and if he wills nobody can stop us thank you mata ji thank you so much mata ji uh, for your beautiful class today and we are very grateful to you mata ji and we look forward for your association again in the future dear devotees let us pay our obeisances to mata ji please vancha kalpataru bhashya cha kripa sindhu bhaiva cha पतिता